Tyler Glasnow made his Dodgers debut. What did he think about his outing? We'll hear what he had to say. We're going to break down his first start in Dodger Blue. Is he a true ace level pitcher? That's coming up next here on Dodgers Dugout. It's time for Dodger Baseball. That's I don't care how many times this team rips my heart out, I'll never stop loving the Los Angeles Dodgers. They blue, 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 and I'm out. What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here, credential member of Dodgers Media. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. Now, if you haven't yet, do me a huge favor and subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. We are so close to 85,000 subscribers, and when we get there, we'll be giving away a brand new Yoshinobu Yamamoto Dodgers jersey. And all you have to do to be eligible for the giveaway is one, be subscribed to the channel, and two, comment Yamamania down below. So be sure to do that. Also, hit that like button if you really want to support the channel. I also want to hear your other Dodger takes too. Anything you got, give me those fire takes down below. And today's Dodgers Nation question of the day, do you believe that Tyler Glass now is going to be a true ace level pitcher for the Dodgers? And what were your takeaways from his first start in Dodger Blue? Let me know down below. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. So today we had another much anticipated Dodger debut, and today it was starting pitcher Tyler Glass. Now he was on the bump against the Angels in the Dodgers' third spring training game, and it was a little rocky early on. The first inning, he allowed a couple of singles, he allowed a walk, but he was able to get out of that inning unscathed thanks to a fantastic defensive play by Mookie Betts. Oh, here's Mookie Betts. He sneaks in behind the runner at first, and they got him. Mookie Betts came out of nowhere and surprised. So what an absolutely outstanding play by Mookie Betts. You've got runners on first and third. Mike Trout hits a fly ball to right field. The runner bluffs like he's going to tag from third to home. Andy Pajes, he makes the throw. Padlo, he ends up cutting it off, and he goes to Mookie, who's covering first base, and they get the double play. Just your classic 9-3-4 double play, right? Like you see every single day, right? You're not going to see that very often, but what you are going to see often this season is heads-up plays from Mookie Betts. Someone that takes pride in every single thing that he does. Someone who was a six-time Gold Glove Award winning right fielder, but had no issue going to second base because it's what's best for the team. Because of his power and the production he can have at the plate, and because of his otherworldly versatility, you can plug him in in the infield and he can have success. Now, I'm very excited to see what Mookie Betts can do defensively. He told us a couple days ago that he didn't even bring his right fielder glove. He didn't bring his right fielder cleats to spring training because he is a full-time second baseman. He's going to be the everyday second baseman. He also said that those gloves in right field, they had some gold on them, right? He wants to get the gold glove at second base. So to have that goal in mind is special to me. It really speaks to the standard he holds himself at because even if Mookie was an average second baseman, based on what he can do at the plate, 39 home runs, over 100 RBI, he will take that every single day of the week. But he wants to be great at everything he does. Excellent is a habit for Marcus Lynn Betts, and I think that he's someone that's going to want to have an impact on that side. And yes, if you look at defensively last season, when he was playing shortstop, he was below average. When he was playing second base, he was slightly below average. But now he's had an entire offseason to work on that position, to get used to it, and kind of reacclimate himself as an everyday infielder. Because remember, Mookie has said, even after winning all those gold gloves in right field, those six gold gloves, that he's an infielder playing in the outfielder. So he still considers himself an infielder. And I think He's excited to play that position. Today was another example of that. But if you look at Tyler Glass down, the start he had today, that gets him out of that jam there in the first inning. And he comes back out in the second inning. First hitter, he faces Brandon Drury. He swings at the first pitch and gets himself an infield single. So not hard contact right there, but a pitch that he left a little too much out over the plate. In the very next header, we saw Tyler Glass now and what he's able to do. He strikes out Ohapi for his first strikeout in Dodger 
Dozier blew on three pitches. Nasty breaking ball down the zone. And the next hitter, Joe Adele, he's swinging on the first pitch, and he's able to get a triple on an elevated fastball that the command was a little off on by a couple of inches there, and he's able to get that triple, and Drury ends up scoring, and that ends up being the first run that Glass now gives up in his Dodgers career. And then he ends up facing nine hitters, so he didn't go deep into the game or anything like that. But all in all, I think when you look at the process of spring training and what it's about, Glass now is going to be sharper than that. Glass now is going to execute better than that when games start. And he's his own tough critic. This is someone that holds himself to an ace level standard. And here's what he thought about his performance after the game. Not very good, but I think in terms of like things I've been working on and like feeling wise and like metrics, they were good. Uh, as far as like execution, not the best, but I think that's kind of what springs for, especially early on. Uh, just iron some things out, but as far as like health and like I said, metrics, it was it was good, so I'll take it. So Glasnow ends up going an in inning and two thirds. He ended up throwing 34 pitches. He was pulled after two outs there in the second inning, and you heard him after the game. He wasn't thrilled with his performance, but it's a part of the spring training process. I think people get a little carried away about his performance today. Okay, let's not get overboard with this. Okay, this is someone who is working on some things. He'd get himself into regular season form. So I think it's nothing to see here. I mean, he could have pitched a little better. The command was a little off and Dave Roberts said after the game that he thought his stuff was good he was just missing a little bit today but we got his pitch count up and it was good so that's the only thing you were trying to accomplish today was to get him out there make his spring training debut with the Dodgers and get that pitch count up and get himself ready to go for when the Dodgers open their season against the Padres in Seoul Korea and he said he's been throwing earlier and that there's enough time for him to get built up so that's not a concern at all he is going to to be ready to go. This was his first of what should be four starts during spring training before he gets the ball on one of the Dodgers' first two games. And I asked Dave Roberts earlier this week, I said, hey, Dave, usually you're announcing your opening day starter deep into March. But when you consider you have Yoshinobu Yamamoto and all the talent that he has and what he brings, is it fair to say that Yoshinobu Yamamoto is going to be on the mound in the Dodgers' first series against the Padres? And he said it was a safe bet. He also said it's a safe bet that Tyler Glass now is going to be on the mound. Glass now said it's going to be a great honor to pitch in Korea. He's never been to Korea to make his regular season debut for the Dodgers. It's going to be a spectacular scene. It's going to be an electric environment and I fully expect Tyler Glass now to be ready to go. So really the big takeaway from his start today was just shaking off the rust, shaking off the rust, getting in the mix. He even said too there were some nerves Right? I mean, you're making your Dodgers debut. You're making your first start of spring training. I mean, these guys have nerves and they experience certain emotions and a lot of adrenaline in these sort of games. So his command is going to get better. His execution is going to get better. I thought it was very interesting, too, what he said to Kirsten Watson after the game was when you are going through this process and you're throwing live BP sessions and you're putting that work, you have to be able to separate when you're working on things versus when you're competing and you're going out there and you're challenging major league hitters. And I think that you start to see in these first couple of starts when these guys start to have that shift where they say, you know what, it's go time. Yes, we worked on some stuff and you can use this as training grounds because these numbers don't matter at all whatsoever. But when you're going against competition and you're a competitor and you're at this level, you want to go out there and have success and perform. And he showed, look at that at bat against Mike Trout, getting him to swing and miss on a pitch in the zone. You saw the strikeout. This is someone who has nasty stuff. You look at his curveball. It's the second most effective pitch when it comes to whiff rate in the game since 2020 behind Devin Williams's changeup, the airbender. So this guy has special stuff. This is someone who I fully expect to be one of the Dodgers best pitchers this season and someone who I think is going to save his best for last. So no matter how he performs in the regular season, he might not even make the all-star team, but there is a world where he could be the Dodgers most important pitcher when the postseason rolls around because he has that electric stuff that plays up in the postseason. High velocity fastball, nasty curveball, nasty slider. It's just about keeping him healthy and putting himself in a position to peak at the right time. And I think that is what they're going to do with Tyler Glass now. So for me, I'm not overreacting to him not going out there and looking like a dominant ace in his first start as a Dodger. This guy has the stuff. He's got the work ethic. Also, 
he has Dr. Mark Pryor, who I think gave him a really nice mound visit there in the first inning. Didn't really tell him much. Just wanted to give him a little breather, give him a little break. He has a great sense, a great feel for those moments. And how about Mr. Mookie Betts, the ball player of all ball players out there making a play? I thought that was special. But overall, my biggest takeaway was he was electric during certain spurts, and I think his execution, his command is going to improve, and he's someone that just want to get the, this one out of the way, and you're going to see him ready to go when the Dodgers take on the Padres in Seoul, Korea. So give me your takes down below. What are your thoughts on Tyler Glass? Now, is he that man? Can he be that true frontline A starting pitcher? I'm here to tell you that he absolutely can. He has stuff that takes a backseat to no one in this game when he's firing on all cylinders. And I think it's just a part of the process, getting him built up, getting that pitch count up. But let me know down below. My name is Doug McCain. You can follow me on X and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. If you haven't yet, I'm going to remind you again, subscribe to the channel, the number one Dodgers YouTube channel, number one show Dodgers dug at live here on YouTube. So it's all thanks to you guys. And we're going to be rewarding you all season long with big time giveaways. And our next giveaway is a Yoshinobu Yamamoto jersey. Once we hit 85,000, all you have to do to be eligible to win, subscribe to the channel and comment Yamamania. Every time you comment Yamamania, that gets entered into a a system and we pick from those names. So it was thousands and thousands for our last one. And definitely you want to give yourself a chance to win because you guys are all winners out there because you're Dodgers fans. All right. But let me know down below what are your takes on Tyler Glass. Now, do you have any concerns? Really? It's just the injuries thing. It's just the injuries thing with Tyler Glass. Now, if he can stay on the mound, he's going to be excellent for this team. And a couple months ago, when I talked to Tyler Glass, now if you if you remember that interview, I asked him. I said, "Is it a goal of yours to set a new career high in innings pitched, which previously was 120, and game started, which was 21?" And he said, "Yes." Most of the times, pitchers and players they don't like to give you specifics like that. He did, so that is a goal of his. So I expect him to hopefully achieve that goal, but just the fact that it is a goal, it tells you a lot about what this organization expects from him and what he expects from himself. So give me 23, 25 starts. Give me 130 to 150 innings, but you perform well in the postseason. That's all I care about. Remember, this team is built for October, not for August. That's the big difference between this year's Dodgers team. But that's going to do it. Remember, nothing brings us together quite like Dodger baseball. Until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.